We talked a little bit about The Dark Knight. You guys remember Heath Ledger was a very, very creepy performance. In fact, to prepare for that role, he locked himself in a hotel room for four months. Four months. And he literally yeah. only slept for two hours a night. Okay, you, if, you, if you don't sleep, you will literally go insane after a short amount of time. And he had a journal. You know, he pretty well locked himself up in a hotel in his apartment to sort of galvanize the upcoming character in his own mind. That was typical of Heath on any movie. So he immersed himself in the upcoming character. And I think this was just a, a whole new level. The hospital room one was kind of intriguing because his sister Kate used to dress him up in a nurse's outfit. It looked pretty funny in a nurse's outfit when he was a kid. And it was full of disturbing images. And so what he would do is he would sit there and focus on these really disgusting things. Think about the worst thoughts you could possibly think about. Heath Ledger's known as a method actor where he never breaks the role. So it's like they let the character inhabit them so much that even when the cameras are not rolling, they are literally not Heath Ledger, they are the Joker. For that entire time that they filmed. I bet he didn't have a lot of friends during that time period. Everybody on set, I, I read all these articles, everybody on set said that they were so creeped out. When he would show up on set, you could just feel this presence that was unworldly. Who was the villain in Black Panther? Michael B. Jordan, yes, yes. He was in an interview saying that he had to go to therapy. So it was no real plan. I didn't have a, I didn't have an escape plan either. So like every day was just going into this place and I just tried to stay there as long as I could. And then when it was all over, I think just being in that kind of, uh, that mind state, that, uh, that, that real unapologetic, you know, just, just real like you know whatever all the time kind of kept it, it caught up with me you know and like I, I got a little you know a little depressed it was tough for me for a minute you know really? just uh, readjusting to being around the people that care about me getting that love that i shut out for a long time like i shut out love i didn't want love and affection you know i wanted to be in this lonely place as long as i could in order to kind of capture the essence of what eric you know stevens was what killmonger was so when when we wrapped the film you know, I'm like, in my mind, I was like, okay, cool, go back to, you know, regular life, get back to LA, it'd be cool. But it was a little tough for me at first to kind of like accept. It was hard just to lay him down yeah. and be done with it. Yeah. How did it take you a while? It took me, it took me, you know, I mean, I don't really know exactly when I came out of it, but you know, I went, went to therapy, you know what I'm saying? I started talking to people, started unpacking a little bit. And I, and, and you know, I find that so interesting. I find that so interesting because I think the body doesn't know the difference. I remember, um, having this conversation with a famous actor once about uh, Anthony Hopkins. I was saying, Anthony Hopkins, I feel for you because, you know, all the stuff you're taking in, you do so well. And he said, I, I used to not think about it, but as I've gotten older, I do think about it because he was say, saying that he had just done a film and he had said to the director he was going to do one wide shot and one close up because mm -hmm. he had to have a heart attack because he didn't want to put his body in that state too many times yes. because your body doesn't know the difference when you get yourself into that state. And so that's why I think it's interesting for people to hear that even though you're playing this character, sometimes the essence of that, the energy of that still remains. One thousand percent. Still remain. Many actors have done this. In fact, they actually bring a psychologist on the set in case they break down completely oh on set. Wow. You know, these people are putting themselves through. History eye opening. So I want you to listen to this interview of this guy who played Mr. Two-Face, the actor, and he was in only one scene with Heath Ledger. They actually, even though he's in the whole movie, they only had one scene together and it was in a hospital scene. So he's describing what it was like to work with Heath Ledger when he came in the room. Listen to this. My one experience with Heath um, on the film was our scene together in the hospital bed, which is really my only scene with him. And it was, um, I was in the hospital bed that day and I thought, well, I don't really have any lines. What am I gonna do? And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And so I was, got in the bed and they were lighting and Chris was walking around and doing things. And then Heath came around and Heath was always in character. So he would come around and, you know, be talking to himself in the corner and a fire like this. And then he would come up, I was laying there and I was watching him the whole time. And he came up and would walk around me like this. And I would watch him and I would watch him. He'd walk around the hospital bed like this. I'd watch him, didn't say anything for maybe an hour. He would walk around and then we'd watch him and then he'd start saying his lines. And I would watch him, boom, watch him come around the bed like this. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden my hand would go up like this and he capped, caught my hand. So we just went through this organic process of developing this scene, which was really nothing. 
And then when we came time to shoot, we had this thing beautifully choreographed and, you know, he did, we never said a word to each other. Wow. Yeah. And then it was a long day and we walked out um, to our back to our trailers and Heath was here and I was walking and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, that's what acting's all about. <laughs>